Once upon a time, a man named Michael lived in a village. He lived with his wife, Laura, their daughter, Lily, and his elderly mother. Every morning, Michael set up his small fries stall outside their home. The delicious smell of freshly fried potatoes often brought villagers over for a snack. Lily studied in fifth grade. She often sat nearby, working on her homework. or watching her father with admiration. Michael loved his daughter. He often glanced at her with pride. While she studied by the light of their small lamp, he dreamed of giving her a better future. He wanted her to continue her studies and achieve more in life. One morning, Laura got up and went to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. She half filled a pot with water, put it on the stove, and lit the fire. Then she added five teaspoons of tea leaves half a cup of milk, and six teaspoons of sugar and stirred slowly. Meanwhile, Michael woke up, took a bath, and got dressed. A little later, Lily woke up, quickly freshened up, and put on her school uniform. While the tea was cooking, Laura placed a pan on another burner, added a little oil, and toasted bread slices on both sides. She took them out onto a platter, opened a jar of jam, and arranged rusks on another dish. Suddenly, she thought, Oh, I need to make Lily's favorite hot chocolate milkshake. She warmed some milk, poured it into a glass, added some chocolate, and stirred well. Finally, she set everything on the kitchen table and called out, Breakfast is ready! After breakfast, Lily grabbed her school bag. Laura spread jam on bread, put it in the lunchbox, and gave it to her. Take this, sweetheart, Laura said, smiling. Don't eat from the canteen, okay? Lily smiled. Thanks, Mama, and hugged her tightly. She quickly ran out the door. Michael got busy with his work, preparing the stall. Laura got busy with house chores. She grabbed a broom, cleaned the house washed the dishes, then took a bath, and got ready for grocery shopping. Mom, I need to go, she said, picking up her purse. Some stuff is needed in the kitchen. I will try to come back soon. She left. The fresh aroma of cooking ketchup filled the air. The mother went to the kitchen. 
Michael was busy making tomato ketchup. She sat down and said, Can I help? No. Mom. Michael replied, You have done so much for me after Dad. Now you should rest. One day, the postman arrived with a letter. Michael read it and turned to Laura. Your father is seriously ill. He wants to see you. Laura cried, and the mother comforted her. We need to leave early tomorrow. Michael said. The next morning, they were ready to go. Michael said. Mom, please take care of Lily. We will come back soon. Lily hugged them both tightly, trying not to show her sadness. They sat out. In the evening, there was a loud knock on the door. The mother opened it. Mr. John, their neighbor, stood there, looking worried. What happened? The mother asked. Mr. John hesitated, then said, Aunt, the bus your son was on. It got into an accident. The mother cried. Is my son all right? Mr. John shook his head. Your son and daughter-in-law. They are no more. Lily's eyes widened. No! No! She cried. The mother fainted. Neighbors rushed to their house. After the funeral, Mrs. John brought them food. The next day, they were alone at home. Lily was hungry but kept weeping. The mother wiped her tears and went to the kitchen. She took out bread, made a half-fried egg, and prepared a tray. Eat something. Lily, the mother said gently, Please. Lily shook her head, refusing. Lily, please, the mother said, wiping her tears. Don't cry, my dear. I'm with you. She said softly, feeding her slowly. After a week, the mother thought, We need to start the fry stall. Otherwise, we can't survive. First, we need food. And then we have to cover Lily's school fees and utility bills. She took out her son's savings. The groceries are enough for a few days. I just need potatoes, oil, and tomatoes for ketchup. She thought, putting the money in her purse. Lily, get up. We need to go to the vegetable market. Lily nodded and both headed out. The mother and Lily reached the market. 
At the vegetable stall, the mother bought a sack of potatoes. And a sack of tomatoes and paid the amount. Then, she headed to the grocery store. And bought five liters of oil. They took a cab and returned home. The mother washed the tomatoes carefully. Then placed them in a pot of boiling water. After boiling, she peeled off the skins. And blended the tomatoes into a smooth paste. Then she poured the tomatoes in a large pot. Added some water. Sugar, salt, chili powder, some garlic. And some vinegar. The kitchen was filled with the rich aroma of homemade ketchup. The mother let the ketchup cool in the pot while she peeled and cut potatoes. Lily dipped the potato pieces in water, letting them soak for a bit. Afterward, she carefully dried them. Now they were ready to fry. By evening, the mother filled bottles with ketchup and set up the stall. Filled the oil in large pot. Customers began arriving. She fried the potatoes in oil. A customer ordered. One box of fries. Please. Coming right up. The mother replied. Lily quickly grabbed a box, filled it with crispy fries. Drizzled the ketchup. And added a sprinkle of spices. Handing it to the customer. She smiled and took the money. Then put it in the money box. The aroma of fresh fries filled the air. As the evening rush began. One day, the groceries were near finished. So the mother went to the store. She bought oil, lentils, soap, spices, tea sugar, bread, and a few eggs. On the way back, Lily noticed hair catchers at a stall. She wanted to buy one. But she remembered her grandmother's struggles with house expenses. Both returned home. One day, a salesman came down their street selling pots, pans, and hair catchers. Lily wanted to buy a new catcher but had no money. She asked her grandmother, Can we give the old one from my mother's diary in exchange for a new one? The grandmother agreed and called the salesman. She said, How much for this new catcher? I want to trade it for this old one. The mother added, It's old, I know. But my granddaughter insisted I sell it. The salesman examined the catcher and realized that it was of gold. But he didn't tell them. Instead, he said, This catcher has no value. 
he went away. In fact, he wanted to take the catcher free of charge at a later time. Meanwhile, another salesman came there. Again, Lily wanted Grandmother to show the catcher to the salesman. The grandmother called the salesman. She said, How much for this new catcher? I want to trade it for this old one. The salesman examined the old catcher and said, this catcher is of gold. The grandmother was shocked. The salesman took the gold catcher and, in exchange, gave his pots, pans, and catchers. After some time, the greedy salesman came. He asked for the catcher. The mother was furious and shouted, How dare you lie to us! You said the catcher was worthless, but we found out it's made of gold. You tried to trick us. The greedy salesman realized his lie had been exposed. He quickly ran away. Moral Honesty is always the best policy.